Welcome back to the Chat Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from Lauren Chen. You know, she has a huge following, Asian American woman. She did a video on Passport Bros and just her take on it. So I think it's going to be a good one. I haven't watched it myself. And um, oh, uh, apparently YouTube's been unsubscribing some of my subscribers. I was just informed uh, today, you know, of this, of recording this, uh, that some of you guys have been unsubscribed so if you guys have been unsubscribed please subscribe back if you are not subscribed please subscribe and uh, let's get to that chow shout time why do you think so many men are traveling overseas to find wives in other countries men are traveling overseas to find wives in other countries. why i'm right here i'm single you know this clip really shows that not a lot of women know about passport bros which is a good thing but you know as time progresses more and more women are going to find out and uh, they're going to get even more upset. No, no. Why? I want to be married. She's if men husbands. are traveling overseas to countries that have less money and less education, it's because they want a woman who is dependent on them for their livelihood, for their resources, to have a good life. And I don't think that that is a good thing. So this Passport Bros video going around where American women are getting kind of upset. That <sighs> When are we going to escape this mentality? She said that these bros are not marrying foreign women because they speak a little English or because they have a lack of education, but because they're more nourishing and more caring. You're describing a maid, a free lift and one for the rest of your life at that. Have you noticed that the ones who are chanting passport bros are the same ones that are also chanting about how they don't want to pay for dates? They basically want you to believe that they can't afford dinner but they can afford a passport and a flight out of the country. Let's talk about passport bros. Let's now do in my it. last video, which was about Gen Z men becoming more conservative while simultaneously Gen Z women are becoming more liberal. I briefly touched upon passport bros. But since that video came out, there have been a lot of people on social media basically telling me I'm enabling human trafficking or prostitution because I'm okay with passport bros or even literally saying that uh, a man merely wanting a more traditional wife, that in and of itself is exploitation and sexes. There's just been, there've been so many bad takes on passport bros that I, I felt like I needed to dedicate an entire video to passport bros. And for yeah. people who might be new to this conversation, you may very well be wondering what exactly is a passport bro. So fair enough, let's start there. Well, according to Urban Dictionary, because this term is, is not in Webster's dictionary, <laughs> but on Urban Dictionary, passport bros are defined as men who have chosen to seek out foreign women, typically from other countries, as opposed to local foreign women, for relationships. They believe that Western women have been influenced by cultural and societal pressures to behave in a certain way, and that by seeking out foreign women, they can find a more authentic, fulfilling, and harmonious relationship. This is seen as a way to restore the natural balance between masculine and feminine energy, and to avoid the, quote, wickedness of Western women. And so this is actually a solid definition from uh, Urban Dictionary, I gotta say. Similarly, another post also defines passport bros as a new phenomenon of Western men who are deciding to go to Asia and elsewhere to find traditional slash feminine women to wife up because they are either annoyed at the insanely high standards that modern Western women hold, or they don't share the extreme woke values, or because Western women can be hypocrites who want to provide her man, but they won't clean or cook. Passport bros, it says, are a variation of the MGTOW movement, but the passport variant- That's exactly what it is. You know, a lot of uh, our MGTOW boys always watch Watch these videos too and they support passport bros because it's the same thing you know instead of men it's men going their own way and not dealing with western women then dealing with the western marriages and things like that and are men who still want to wife up good women instead of rejecting marriage altogether passport bros conversely believe that certain women are worthy of marriage and that both husband and wife should contribute to the marriage in some way so essentially based on that definition uh, passport bros are men who want to get married have kids and have a more i guess traditional lifestyle but they are under the impression or they believe we're not saying whether it's true or not but just they believe that increasingly western women don't want that for themselves because of either feminism or just having a career career or personal preference. And so in order to seek out a relationship that is amenable to them, they are instead choosing to go to other countries where the culture is different, where women or at least more women might still be interested in something like staying home to raise the kids. And Emma? as someone who firmly believes that because who you marry is the most important decision of your entire life, it you should is. be very intentional 
uh, with seeking a relationship. I don't have a problem with this concept of passport bros. I don't think anyone should find it strange that someone would move for a greater likelihood of finding a spouse if in this day and age, it's totally common to move for a greater likelihood of finding a job. I mean, a spouse is way more important for a job. So if you feel like where you live or in your current situation, you're not in the best position for whatever reason to find a spouse, but that might change if you move, then in my opinion, you go do that. You move, find your happy ever after you know i'm sure a lot of you guys some of you probably not a lot but a good, a good amount of you guys probably don't like lauren probably feels like she's a little bit too you know conservative and just like a religious uh, christian person but you know she has really good takes this is an awesome take on passport bros and i and i also think that most women should be taking this take like why do you care women men are just leaving to go look for something better why are you so upset when, you know, you're the one that don't even want these men in the first place? Find whoever you can build a life with. However, that is my take on what is described here as passport bros. However, as is becoming increasingly clear to me, there are a lot of people out there who are not so charitable about the intents or actions of, uh, you know, so-called passport bros. Because you see, Urban Dictionary also defines passport bros as men whose only means of attracting women is through financial exploitation. Oh, shit. This is the only tool in their kit, so they fly to overexploited nations where women have less financial standing and show off $20 here or there to get women's attention. And ironically, they don't like gold diggers in places like the US, but they're fine giving their money away this, to women. This is definitely a woman that wrote this one. <laughs> women who'll do anything for their coins because they need to buy food to feed their families. It's basically international prostitution with less oversight. So yeah, this is the type of mentality <laughs> for passport bros. This is the type of criticism passport bros are getting, especially but not exclusively from Western feminist women that inspired me to make this video because despite the impression that a lot of people are under that this is a new phenomenon, even one of those urban dictionary definitions called it a new phenomenon, Western men uh, finding wives abroad is actually not new in the slightest. Nope. You see, I come from a kind of unique unique background. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm half Chinese and I'm half white and I actually grew up abroad, mostly in Asia. I've lived in Singapore, Hong Kong and Shanghai. And in addition to that, I also got to travel uh, throughout Asia this. a lot, which I'm really lucky for going to places like Thailand, Indonesia. And while I was a kid overseas, I went to American international schools. And as people who are familiar with, I guess, expat culture uh, will know, there are many families in those types of communities, expat communities that are comprised of Western men and Asian women. And obviously passport bros doesn't mean you have to go to Asia. There are also passport bros who go to places in Eastern Europe or South America. But from my own personal experience, I am very familiar with Western men going to Asia specifically. And in fact, a lot of my friends growing up uh, were the product of these Western man slash Asian woman relationships. I don't qualify myself here because I mean, A, my dad is the Chinese one, not my mom so oh, that gender dynamic is different and also uh, even though my dad is chinese he's asian my parents met in montreal not in hong kong where my dad is from they only moved to hong kong together later so yeah i mean i'm not a product of something like this but a lot of my peers growing up were and you know what their families were happy. Uh, divorce was basically an unknown thing mm -hmm. to me before I, I, I moved to Canada and later the United States. These families were well provided for. Uh, these mothers largely but not exclusively stayed home and took care of the kids, my friends. And what's even more than that, it's interesting to me that my mother, who by the way was the one who had the expat job abroad, uh, not my father, she would talk to these Western men and very commonly would hear from them how they enjoyed having a, an Asian wife because Western Western women were often too focused on, on their careers, but since they had money themselves, really what they were looking for was a partner who could compliment them, i.e. do something they couldn't in, you know, staying home with the kids and helping them. Ooh, that was a great description, Lauren. Fuck yeah. I love this. That's exactly it. You know, men have the money, men have the means, especially these certain men. So we're not looking for someone that has means and money also. We're looking for someone that can do something that we can't raise the children and take care of the household while we do that like the, the complement our life the complement our lifestyle not that we want to oppress people or we want you know we're looking for submissive women no we're looking for a woman that will literally complement 
our lives and complement our lifestyle and how we want to go about raising a family. And yes, most Western women don't care about this. They really think that what they provide and what they do or whatever they bring to the table is all what men want. And it's not like they only think of themselves. They never think of what would that man that I want wants build a happy, healthy home life. You know, that whole relationship dynamic of like foreign man, local woman, uh, when I was growing up in Asia, it was just very common for me to see. And uh, I didn't really think anything of it. And so when I went on Twitter and saw all the backlash that passport bros were getting, I was honestly kind of surprised by it, especially surprised at how these Western men who again were my mom's co-workers, colleagues, uh, her friends. These men, apparently I was learning, were basically just human traffickers who were so pathetic they couldn't even get a wife in their own country. And meanwhile, these Asian moms who I would see, uh, you know, being very dedicated to their families, very well-spoken and yes, intelligent, apparently they were just being exploited, uh, basically human trafficked, taking advantage of because they were poor and uneducated. I mean, really, if you want to see the rage directed to passport bros, all you need to do is check out a site like TikTok. Before we do that together, I I do want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Patriot Gold. Did you know that Jerome Powell and the Fed raised rates for the 11th time in July? And The Hill has warned it's a in a row. Now let's look at at least one woman who is not a fan of these passport bros. I didn't know what a passport bro was until one of my recent videos did well. Now I have the misfortune of knowing what the f*** that is. And my only question is... We know this one. Who's going to tell them? Who is going to tell these men that American women are some of the last demographics of women to catch up with what we're, we're talking about right now. You think Russian women are going to put up with your shit? You think Asian women are going to go 50-50 with you on the bill? You think French women are going to sleep with you just because you showed up? They really think American Western women are like the top, the cream of the crop that you know, just because they're willing to go 50-50 or whatever it is, which I still have not really met a woman. Oh, I met one woman that was willing to go 50-50 on almost everything. But other than that, she was a rare catch to kind of find in the first place. So, Oh, who's going to tell them? So straight up right here, I'm sorry, but this woman does not understand the mentality of a passport bro or what a passport bro even is. Of all of the men that I've seen say that they would be interested in dating a foreign woman, even if it meant going abroad to find one, they're not looking for just hookups or a one night stand. They actually want a committed relationship. They want to get married and they want to have kids. And yep. obviously there are men in Western culture who are participating in hookup and all they want to do is just sleep with women. They're not interested in commitment or monogamy or anything like that. But that is not all Western men. And I don't think that's the mentality of passport bros. Not that there are no men who want to go abroad to just sleep with women, but that's not the passport bro phenomenon that we are talking about Correct. because yes traditionally minded western men do exist men who want to get married and have a family do exist perhaps they're just not interested in you the reason why you can't find a traditional woman in america anymore is because there's no such thing as a traditional home or family structure because of the way our economy is us all over right now and i think it's ironic that american women in response to this are going oh I can make my own money and I don't have to have kids and go through the painful process of labor and raising children alone. And I don't have to pretend to like some someone's grubby little son in order to make ends meet, in order to survive. I have literally all the options in the world. Oh, I'm going to be a career woman and I'm going to be alone. And men's response to this is better renew my passport because you just literally said i would rather be alone so technically you're not you're out of the dating market and if you're out of the dating market and men are like well man we need to go find somebody that's willing to do it with us we're going to get a passport that makes total sense am i stupid you guys are the ones who are afraid to be alone you guys are the ones who would rather go to fly to a foreign country and find a wife than be alone. She ain't wrong on this one. I do agree. Most of us don't want to be alone. Men admit this, though. Women don't seem to want to admit this. You know, men, we know it's going to be a lonely life later. Most men are okay with it, actually, because we know most men end up being lonely. But 
if we can do something about it to get a family, to get a wife, to get, a, you know, kids, we're going to do something about it. Why? Because we're doers. This is what men do. We don't just wait there and wait for our manifestation of uh, women coming, the perfect women coming into our life. Now we're going to go look for the perfect women or the closest possible for ourselves and, you know, begin our goddamn lives. That's what men do. How ironic is that? I don't see how this is an own in any way, shape, nope. or form. Like, yes, I mean, people don't want to be alone. I don't know why that's a bad thing. If you're someone who wants to get married, of course, you're going to want to find a partner. And I think it's very telling that this woman believes the only reason why a woman would want to be with a man is because she would be financially dependent on him. Because it's not as if women, just based on their own accord or preference, would want to seek out things like being a wife or motherhood. It's like, Missy, I don't know what else to say, except for that attitude is specifically why passport bros exist. Because Damn guess right. what? Feminine women, still they're still out there. And yeah, there are women, including some Western women. I don't want to make it seem like all Western women are bad, but there are, I think, relatively fewer of them in the West who will look at these men who are interested in providing for their families, who want to get married and who want to have kids, and they will see that as an asset, not as someone who just wants to control them. And you know what? Ultimately, if you're this disinterested in the men who are going overseas because you don't want the lifestyle that they're offering, why do you even care? Like, why is it so intriguing that a man who you supposedly aren't interested in is also not interested in you? That's what I don't understand. And so yep. many people or so many men in my comments are saying things like, good, good, have fun being single forever. Someone's going to own a lot of cats. Da, da, da. And I'm like, you promise? You promise? Brett, I don't know who needs to tell you this. Brett must have really fucked her up. And it's not fair. It's certainly not fair. But I can have like five boyfriends who all serve a different purpose in my life the same way you guys have had five different girlfriends who did the same thing for you. And I've never had five girlfriends at one time. Uh, I mean, you guys let me know if you guys had five girlfriends at one time. I'm sure there's some chads out there, you know, doing their thing, but... I don't think most men have ever had five girlfriends at one fucking goddamn time. That is, for one, a shitload of work. Two, a shitload of money and resources. That's just way too much. And freely do that. There are no consequences except for some anonymous profile on TikTok calling me some kind of slur. And guess what, guys? I think I'm ready to face those repercussions. I think I can get over that. I think it's going to be okay. So say, send me a postcard from France. <laughs> best of luck. See, this is what I'm talking about. This woman is proudly saying, I'm not interested in you men who like want a family and I can proudly have a lifestyle where I either have, you know, no significant other or four or five. And that's what I want. Is it that shocking that a traditionally minded man would not be interested in you? Like you are why these passport bros exist. And once more, she's conflating the men who have five girlfriends at once that I'm guessing she hangs around with, yep. with all men, including the passport bros. It's like, these are two very distinct type of of man it's like sweetie just because you happen to attract and interact with human garbage that doesn't mean that that's representative <laughs> of all men and it's just there's a huge amount of projection here and in addition mm -hmm. to the projection frankly for being real i think a lot of the backlash that passport bros have gotten also comes from a place of jealousy honestly <laughs> the amount of white dudes with go, thai women that are waiting to board international flights it's an absurdity it is crazy. <laughs> like, half of the couples in this airport right now are beautiful Thai women with super basic white dudes. She's mad. You can tell that she is being mad. She dudes. says that there are super basic white dudes, but at the same time, you can see that it's bothering her. It is absolutely bothering her. And it's because, I mean, if we're, if we're being just like, real here. White women like her are hypergamous, which a lot of women are, and that's totally fine. But that means that there's no way she would be interested in dating uh, the average Thai man who is from a, an economically developing country. I want to I want to be clear here. Not everyone from a developing country is uh, in poverty. Of course not. Thailand, a lot of these Asian and Eastern European countries, they have a growing middle class and they even have people who are extremely wealthy. But it's like a white woman like that, she's probably not interested in the average Thai man. And so what a white man dating a Thai woman woman means is that there are less men out there who she would be interested in dating. And so she doesn't like that she now has competition on an international level, which is mm -hmm. fine. And I mean, you don't need to like it. If you're single, you're in the dating market. <clears throat> of course, you're not going to like more competition. 
But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you should be slandering the men who aren't interested in you anymore as human traffickers or people who are trying to financially exploit other women. And it's kind of interesting because going down the rabbit hole of like, oh, this is just about money. If an American woman were to meet uh, a rich or, you know, by relative standards, a rich foreigner who wanted to bring her somewhere exotic that she's never been, uh, that would be literally a romance novel. <laughs> there are romance novels. That's an entire genre of romance just dedicated to to that right. situation. But when it comes to Asian, Eastern European, or like Latin American women who might be in that same position, all of a sudden now, oh, you know, the difference in wealth, that's, that's actually exploitation and it's wrong and therefore you should just stay here so I, I could reject you. It's like, no, let these people live their lives. Uh, people in developing countries, they it's not like they can't consent. It's not as if they are children or mentally feeble. Like they are able to consent to mutually beneficial relationships. No, she, she's right. I never even thought about this whole romance novel thing. Men are going out there and doing it, you know, finding wives and finding women out there and, you know, giving them that romance novel, that romance you know, ideology of, you know, a, like a man sweeping them off their feet kind of thing. I just realized, yeah, that's what passport pros do. God dang, you know, like we've been, we've been romancing women left and right, you know, giving women the, that fairy tale, fairy tale uh, lifestyle that they've been wanting. It's just, it's not American women though. That's all. <laughs> it's just like the cope that surrounds the feminist backlash uh, to passport bros. That's kind of laughable. You pay attention to the passport bros. Like they're getting women from like the DR, Colombia, yes. uh, the Philippines, Thailand. Mm -hmm. Like oh. women can that can speak very little English. Women that don't have and, education. And not, women that, that need missing, them. Women that need women them. Women are raised to be wives. Mm -hmm. They learn in everything the, from, communities. from birth, from That's their like, father, <laughs> from their mother, how to be a wife and how to support your men. Women that need them. It's not even women that need them. It's women that treat them with respect. So we don't. Y'all know y'all don't. Stop. <laughs> like, stop just stop. Know well, that's don't. not true. <laughs> Why I love that clip is because uh, the woman clip. there, she tries to make it seem like if a woman needs a man, that's automatically exploitation mm -hmm. or that's not really a consensual relationship. It's coercive. In relationships that last, yes, you should need each other. Correct. A woman should need a man just like a man needs a woman. And I think women cannot stand the idea that men still want a woman to need them. And it's kind of funny as you could kind of see there because Asian women, especially have begun weighing in on the issue of passport bros. And it turns out that uh, they are not a fan of being portrayed as just these helpless, poor, uneducated victims. Go figure, it seems like these women who apparently have access to internet, good for them, guys. Yeah, it turns out they're perfectly capable of choosing a husband for themselves and like raising a happy family. Do you know why? <laughs> because they're poor! <laughs> Y'all are taking- I am proud to say that I am a poor Filipino, but despite of being poor, I am academically excellent. She has AirPods. They look like AirPods. Yeah, so those are pretty pricey. So. Competitive, talented, if I must add, and well mannered. In my country, we have a subject that we call GMRC. That stands for Good Manners and Right Conduct. I didn't graduate from a prestigious school, but I can speak with class and my English is quite okay. If being poor means we can make our man feel respected, happy, and loved, then we wouldn't mind being poor. If it means being kind and nice to people, then it's okay. We poor people doesn't keep ourselves busy by putting on makeups, long, fake nails, lashes, and stuffs. We keep ourselves busy by cleaning the house, taking care of our partner while working at the same time. If being Ooh. poor means we are- See, while working at the same time. Look, the women really love to say that, oh, they're just gonna be stay-at-home wives, that you have to be the full breadwinner. No, that's not how it really works in Asian countries. Asian countries, women know they wanna contribute and they're gonna contribute any way possible by working part-time jobs, full-time jobs, whatever it is to contribute to the family household. are not rude, then that's okay. We are happy being poor. We are proud being poor. American guys are going across the country to find a Filipina slaves. Girl, what did I do today? You cooked dinner. You went to the grocery stores before and got all the groceries to cook dinner. And you cleaned up the room, whole room, and put all my clothes away without me asking for it. And do I feel like I'm a slave? No. Because what did you do today? What did I do? I bought Starbucks. I took it out of the trash when I saw you struggling with it. You were going to try to take it out yourself. And, um, well, I got your nails done the other day. 
So it's not a game of who does more for who. It's about thinking what the other person needs and doing it without them having to ask for it. And even if I do just the little things for him, he's always so surprised and appreciative. Which makes me wonder what's going on over there in America. Exactly. Nothing. They're not doing anything. That's what's going on. And mind you, we're not taking them away from you. They're coming to find us. Look, are there men out there who would travel overseas specifically because they want to essentially hold a woman hostage because she's financially dependent on him and, uh, you know, he plans on abusing her and controlling her and he's preying on the fact that she, you know, is impoverished and that's like his whole thing? Yeah. Those type of men exist, and when they do exist, uh, I, I condemn that. But to make it seem like that's any man who is interested in a foreign woman who has traditional values, I'm sorry, that is absolute BS. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. condemn relationships where there's a huge age gap and that's exploitative. Let's condemn relationships where there's financial abuse. But what we shouldn't do is assume that every man who is less interested in Western women must be a, a huge predatory creep simply because we as Western women are jealous of the fact that, hey, men can now actually go other places for relationships. In any case, that's basically my take on Passport Bros. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you understand the mentality behind Passport Bros? Uh, are you for or against them? Do you think I'm being too charitable toward them? Do you think some of these feminists, these women are being too harsh? Let me know down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time. Ooh, that was some awesome chow, you know? Shout outs to Lauren Chen. I'll link everything down below for her. But her take was awesome. Yeah, perfect take, and I, in my opinion, you know, very respectable, very, you know, understanding of why because she lived through this she had a lot of friends that were products of this and they turned out to be great people which is what we want our kids to turn out to be you know we don't want our kids to turn out to be the way how the western the western society is turning kids out we'd rather have strong families a strong mother to help take care of the kids while we're out doing whatever we need to do to you know provide the the, the bread Please like subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.